All right. So during the pandemic, we've been discussing this book, Exploring Worship by Bob Sword, just a practical guide for praise and worship. And every week on Zoom, we have a group of Levites or praise and worship leaders or up and coming leaders or up and coming musicians. We discuss a chapter every week. So this week I covered chapter 10 and chapter 10 is absolutely amazing. I just wanted to share it with you this week. I hope that it's a blessing to you. Send this video to all of your music department heads or your leadership heads or your worship leaders. I'm telling you, they will get something out of this. If you want to get the book, the name of the book is Exploring Worship by Bob Soares. Check this out. Presenting Rico Anthony Enterprises, offering music coaching, leadership, teaching, motivational speaking, consulting, one-on-one -on -one piano lessons, and so much more. You can search on all social media platforms, Rico Anthony Enterprises, or you can visit www.ricoanthony.net. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this day, this time, for this meeting. I pray, God, that you would bless us, oh God, as we attempt to go and further ourselves in growth and in, knowledge, in the knowledge of you and in exploring chapter 10, planning the worship service. I pray, God, that you would give us better tools to uh, equip us that we will continue and to be effective in your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So chapter 10 um, is a is exploring worship. Uh, the book is exploring worship. Chapter ten talks about um, planning the worship service, and we all know that that's a um, very important part of um, of of planning. is is a very important part of life. If you buy a house, you want to plan to buy a house. If you buy a car, you want to plan to buy that car. Um, and in, in, in a worship service, you actually want to plan or have a plan, some type of vision. Uh, the Bible speaks about without a vision, uh, the people perish. So planning and vision, of course, they uh, go hand in hand, planning and casting, casting that vision and then executing, um, trying to execute what you planned. Um, so let's see um, the first chapter. I mean, we talk it talks about flexibility. Um, the first part talks about flexibility, meaning even though you have a plan, uh, being sensitive to the spirit, being willing to change and being able to adjust, being sensitive to the spirit, simply meaning um, if I'm in worship, uh, if, I, if I'm doing the worship service and the Lord directs me to go to the left, then I'm able to go to the left. Don't sing this song, sing this song. Uh, being sensitive to what's going on in this in the service the spirit of things if deliverance is going on in service um you know being sensitive to that and allowing god to speak to me um in that way all right also being willing to change if you do have a plan and you say uh and the lord says don't sing that then you don't sing that and you go with what with the direction that he's going uh, with with the direction that God is that God is flowing and willing to adjust, um, you know. I mean, we talk about flexibility, but just willing to adjust. Sometimes, you know, the Lord is just is just moving, and it's a it's a it's a direct flow. Um, and so, just being able to adjust. You may have had all praise songs, but the Lord maybe may want you to do all worship songs. So, being able to flow and adjust, even in that area as well. All right. Um, this next part um, talks about the uncertainty of um, of the the worship service. We don't always know how God is going to move. Uh, po uh, negative, um, positive uncertainty. I think that's the word. I can't even see what is. It? Oh, negative uncertainty. I'm sorry. Negative uncertainty. So we don't always know how God is going to move. Um, we we you know sometimes sometimes literally in worship i'm sure um especially the ones that are up front you you may you may come with the plan in mind and it just feels different you know from your 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 prayer and your discernment it just feels different like you didn't like you don't even feel that god is kind of moving in that direction anymore um so 
And then the next next thing that I wrote from the book says too much confidence will cause you to plow forward and miss God. Thought about that thing um, and playing and playing football and um, or, or, or just in, in doing anything. And you're supposed to be blocking someone. You have someone in front of you and you put your head down and you go forward and you miss the guy that you're blocking. You literally messed up. You're done because you're going to cause that person that you're blocking for. You're going to cause everything to literally be out of whack. And that's how it is um, in, in, our, in our worship experience, in our worship service. When we, when we come in cocky, too much confidence. I know this. I've been doing this. I, I know what I'm doing. So when we, when we come in like that, we just go forward. And we, we've missed our, our total assignment. We're off. Coaches is arguing and fussing. We're off. We're off. Everything is off. And we've missed God. We've missed, it. We've missed everything because we think we know what we're doing. Um, and then, then the next line says, "The Lord will train you to become a better, better follower through the through this the the negative uncertainty. So sometimes you will we'll be in service, and we just we think we we got a plan. We leaning on that plan. We we let's say we did plow forward and miss God. Then that's an experience. That's something that you learn from, and you say, you know what? I better not do that again. I better be a little bit more sensitive to what God is saying to me." Um, to me as far as worship and his flow I'm always listening When I'm on the organ I'm always listening to God Like where is he What is he telling me to play in this moment What is he What is he saying Should I, should I change keys Do we need to modulate You know What What is he What is, what is Where is he taking me Where is he taking me To lead the people um, Through music Where is he Where 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 is he speaking I'm always listening Because Sometimes uh, With God It's not It's not necessarily loud It's like Relax You know Calm down And listen Because he's gonna speak He's gonna tell you He's gonna direct you um, but you have to, you have to have that, that, that ear, um, that, that, and then that, even that will to listen. Some people, they don't even, they don't even care what you, I think about basketball and I remember watching, um, when I went to go see my cousin Mike play, um, uh, when he played for the University of Maryland, he played basketball, and he would run up and down the court. And when you watch it on television, it looks the game, everything. It feels totally different. I would see Terrell Stoglin, Stoglin, um, every play he would he would go down the court, but he would always be looking to um, dribble the ball near the coach so that he could get what play the coach wanted to run, so he could call it. We run, we're running triangle We're running whatever He would always look toward the coach For direction No matter no matter what was going on Even if he felt like he knew What the coach was going to tell him to do He still he still moved toward um, Even if he felt like he knew What the coach was going to do He still moved toward um, Toward the coach To get that direction Alright so the Lord, like, like I said, the Lord will train you to become a better, a better follower. And sometimes um, that that training happens through our failure. I mean, just, you know, something when you fail in praise and worship, when you do something wrong, that's a great opportunity for the Lord to coach you um, to be better in that next moment. All right. Um, this one says the uh, personal preparation. And Bob Source talks about the set list, um, the list of um, the list of the, the list of what we're going to do to, to do today. That's that's something that you can do as a as a praise and worship leader. You can create that list. Um, it talks. Then the next he talks about uh, spending more time in prayer than preparing a list. So if you spend. 20, it takes you 30 minutes to get your list together you thinking you really trying to figure it out what you're going to sing um but then you spend five minutes in prayer because you you know usually uh, before the praise team goes out in most in a lot of churches the praise team will get together and pray and that prayer is maybe 30 seconds you know it's, it's, it's not long at all it's not a, usually a long prayer but you you literally spent 30 minutes preparing the list but you didn't. Um, but your but your 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 prayer was short. But your but your but the time that you spent in the list was long. 
and and then next he talks about the it's a 24 7 job 24 hours a day seven days a week um your your life this is what i mean by every decision is a factor your life the decisions that you make um the the things that you decide to do throughout that week impact your your praise and worship the praise and worship experience your sensitivity how are you hearing from god everything that you do that you do th throughout that week because we make we make conscious decisions of whether we're going to live um whether we're going to live um according to the word of god or whether we're going to do our own thing so if you can't listen to god in in regular things why would we think that you're going to listen to God when I say regular thing like your your day to day life? Why would we think that you're going to listen to God after, you know, uh, why would we think that you're going to listen to God? Not after. I'm sorry. Why would we think that you're going to listen to God on the platform? Because you think you know where you're going to go. You think you know what you're doing. You've been doing it so long. All right. Um, and then the next elements needed for work for worship uh, elements needed. For that is for that experience, the word for your personal preparation. You need the word, which is the Bible, the word of God. Worship, literally spending time in in you know in worshiping worshiping the Lord. Meaning your your uh, in this particular aspect, we're one hundred percent talking about your lifestyle, uh, and then prayer, constant life of prayer. I always quote uh, Vinny on when he talks about um, the discernment. Um, a strong prayer life is going to give you that that uh, spirit of discernment. All right. All right. And then avoid rushing, avoid rushing, avoid rushing. Um, be willing to say no to things that will cause you to be late or throw you off kilter. Like be willing to say because some people are so nice. It's just, you know, uh, do you mind going to the store for me? You know, you know, you got rehearsal at seven thirty, um, and it's seven o'clock, and so you, <laughs> you going to the store is gonna make you late, or you doing you doing something um, that's totally uh, in the way of 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 where, of where you're going that 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 can throw you off. You know, you have to literally make choices and say, you know what, I gotta be at rehearsal. You know, when, especially in school, I learned. Uh, when I have an assignment due, it doesn't matter what else I have going on. I have to get this assignment in, and I, I believe that we have the same have the same action uh, gumption when it comes to the spirit of God, to the uh, to the things of God. All right, the enemy will always send send distractions. The enemy will always send distractions. It's always something. You notice, like the, the distraction usually comes Saturday night, Sunday morning, or always before a major assignment. Like any any time that you you have something that may be uh, impactful to the world, the enemy does not want you to get that out. It is his job to distract you. Whenever you have a message or a, a word from the Lord, the uh, the enemy is always going to try to distract you. All right. Um, uh, and and if and, and and I want you to think about this, um, especially for the end. What things can what things can distract you? Just as a person, just just a personal question. We don't have to answer right now. But what things can distract you? With me, I'm this type of person. When I'm focused on something, when I'm doing something, I gotta be focused on that. If you come at, come to me talking about something else that has nothing to do with what I'm working on, I'm off. I'm totally off. I'm off. There are certain people in my life that can throw me completely off to the point where I can't even get uh, my my assignment my assignment done. Of course, um, usually with with married men, their our wives. If, if, if we're not if if something is wrong, that can kind of throw us off completely. You know, with with what we're what we're supposed to with what, with what we're supposed to be doing. So we want to try to you know. Um, uh, a lot of people call call men uh, Mister Fix It because they they're um, they're able to not they're able to to figure things out. I mean, God kind of made us that way that we're able to kind of fix things. So if it's something that needs to be fixed, as far as our our spouses are concerned, we want to make sure that we go ahead and fix that because we're going to be off kilter um, if we go if we try to go about this. If we try to keep doing this and haven't fixed uh, that part. All right, all right. 
Uh, so think about that question. What things can distract you? All right. And this next one says God uses human. God uses human leadership. Uh, we are imperfect people. Um, we are. We all make mistakes. Every um, situation in praise and worship is not going to be perfect. There are going to be times in praise and worship. Just what it is where, you know, we hit a bump in the road. But experience and knowing that, you know, God, well, God knew that that, that was going to take place. You know, God, you know, God knew or well, God, God is not not going to leave me out here just because this mistake was made. I've seen people when they make a mistake. Oh, man, that's it. They done. Oh, my God. Jeez, I can't even finish the song. But just knowing that we're all imperfect people, when you make a mistake in worship, um, when you make a mistake in worship, you know, that's when you should even lean to God even more. God, I need you right here. You know what I mean? You might not have to say it in the microphone, but, you know, you, you're letting them know, God, I need you right here. You know, and uh, so the, and then the next one says, if God called you, he will enable you. Um, and even back to that first point, no matter what you've done in your life. No matter what you've done, understand that God is able to forgive. And once that forgiveness takes place, you're a new creature. You're not the same person. Your voice, your gift, he's able to use and cultivate that for his glory. All right. Uh, mistakes are going to happen. Mistakes are going to happen. I, I've already kind of covered that. And then correction should be done in private. Correction should be done in private. And with that being said, let's go to the next. Amen. That's what y'all practice and came up with. That's what practice did for y'all. Uh, y'all don't ever need to practice again if that's what it did for y'all. You, you can stay. Y'all practicing for a sounding like that. I told y'all that's not going to work in Jacksonville. Hey Amen. You sat it up for a bonus. How it was scrap. They played it like it wasn't scrap. Man, yield, 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 yield. I love it. Come on, clap them hands. All right. I'm going to play it again. Um, that, that goes back to my point um, where I said correction should be done in private. Uh, there's no, there's no appropriate time. Um, there's no appropriate reason to talk to volunteers in that way. We have to understand now, um, they're volunteers. They don't have to be there. Uh, of course, we're doing this for the Lord, but they don't have to do this in your church for the Lord. They don't have to do this under your leadership for the Lord. Uh, it's never cool to embarrass people, um, or to, to shame them. Um, in that way we have to we have to coach them we have to coach people up and uh if they're making mistakes in that way that's just a that's just a gr better opportunity a greater opportunity for you to coach them and people that you coach you generally have you you will have a uh, greater influence in their life so you'll be able to say hey i need can you come out here at, at uh at at eight o'clock in the morning for rehearsal who wants to get up at eight o'clock in the morning for rehearsal nobody does but if you pour it into their life, um, they'll they'll move. They'll do more than that person that you that you embarrass, or that you that you do very little for. So correction should be done in private. Um, that's just the the thing that that's going viral today. <clears throat> All right. Um, the set is the set this sacred? <clears throat> um, no. Um. Bob Sores talks about he talks about <clears throat> excuse me he talks about having um, if you had 10 people to pray and say what should we sing today you would get 10 different asks fast and pray for a week 
and they came back you would have 10 different lists so with that being said um he talks about the, the list is not circuit god he just wants your he wants your he wants our hearts no matter what song god wants our whole heart no matter what song we sing he wants our heart our set list is a resource of possibilities in other words um we got 30 different songs that we can choose from you know and then we'll, we can make a decision you know from those all these are just possibilities the goal the goal is to encounter jesus preparation liberates us from uh let's 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 go back to the point i'm sorry rushing preparing a set list preparation liberates us from worrying so and what i mean what i mean by worrying is worrying about what the next song is going to be worrying about where we're going oh lord what's going to happen we've actually prepared um, we've actually prepared now if God moves differently then that's a little bit different we're not worried we're still not worried we're dependent on him he's directing at that point and that's literally what we want um, we want the we want that encounter all right preparing a set list uh, preparing preparation liberates us from uh, worrying what's next all right a master list um, when in these these are just points that you can have that you should have um, when conducting when putting your your master list together um, uh, they should be in you can do it in ABC order you can do it based on key you can do it based on tempo theme uh, new new song old song um, I didn't even, I didn't even write this one but if it's a hymn or not you can write those those key points down and then what what the way I do my list my list may have some of the same songs in that you know in that list so every song that's in a flat every song that's in b flat every song that's in a you know you want to have those there um and and the keys are important because you want to uh you want to be able to um adjust you you want to be able to flow like if you're going to another song if you're going to uh total praise well that song is in c sharp uh, but you were just singing in a flat so now if we sing it and you it usually just flow with with no without even considering the pause for the musician to change the key for you you're just flowing then we're singing total praise in a flat we're going to be in the rafters all right so that master list um is going to is going to be important for that it's going to give you those those possibilities so you won't have to work as hard man what was that song we sung what was that song whatever so you got that master that master list of songs that's a that's a good practice uh, themes um, Themes should be You know think, when, I, when I say themes Meaning things of the service um, What What's going on Like what You know Is it Is, is the theme today um, and, and it could be based on The pastor's uh, The pastor's topic Or what he's been talking about What he's been preaching about um, So if he's doing a series On forgiveness Then you know It may be a good practice um, to seek the Lord about some songs that have to do with forgiveness, um, you know, um, you know, just just have just being, it, you know, that that's an option. The national season, if it's Christmas time, you know, we generally kind of sing songs that are geared toward more towards Christmas, um, uh, and it's also wise to consult the pastor the pastoral team for suggestions. So what I mean by that is, you know, you you as the, as the music director. Um, most pastors are, are don't uh, well they don't they they're not as hands on. What I mean by that is all in the music department. I'm, well, I won't even say most pastors are not. Every pastor is not going to be in the music department. So with that being said, um, but there but there may be a time where he wants to hear a certain song. Man, I had this song in, in my head, you know. So I always always um. Um, with Pastor Moore, I always um, touch base with him throughout the week. So um, maybe once or twice, sometimes three times a week. You know, we talk on the phone. So I kind of see where he's at. You know, kind of kind of get a gauge of you know what what he what he's what he's thinking about. And if we travel throughout the week, then I kind of know, you know, because he'll sing certain songs. So I kind of know, you know, what vein he's in. 
you know what I mean, and then we can we can make those adjustments uh, adjustments like that. But it's it is wise to consult the pastoral team. If the pastor has a song on his heart, you know, just hit in the office before you go in, before you go in the service and say, uh, Pastor, is there anything, uh, any any song you got on your mind, any song you got on your heart, anything you want to hear today, you know, whatever. And that's just giving that consideration um, and and an understanding um, that we you know we we serve at the at the pleasure. Because if the pastor didn't want you to be there, you'd be fired, all right? Well, uh, God hired me. Yeah, he did. But uh, if you don't jail well with the pastor, <laughs> I guarantee you, you won't be there uh, long. You won't be there long. So you always want to make sure that you consult with, you know, if you if it's, if it's possible, um, consult with them from time to time and see if there's anything. Or if it's a song that they may have been listening to that they really want the praise team or the choir to learn, all right? Um the rut alert and i just did he, he talks about so many things but i did this to make it i did i just cut it cut it back to make it make it short every musician that i'm that i know of um singer we get into these like ruts like what i said what i mean by ruts is like and that's it that's even in our spiritual walk sometimes and um one thing i'll say that i didn't that i didn't um uh, write down is when you when you get in that place uh, fasting is always gonna be is is gonna be key. Fasting and prayer, but, but he talked about that earlier. So I didn't. He didn't talk about the fasting part, but he talked about the prayer part, the twenty four seven lifestyle part. Uh, but when you when the, when the whole team is actually in that rut, um, it's it's not a bad idea to fast. Um, uh, the fact to fast and pray, you know, just kind of just kind of change up even what you do in rehearsals. Instead of just rehearsing all the time, come in and have prayer. All right. So if worship becomes too predictable, and then we, now now we're talking about the actual experience of worship, uh, people will lose interest. We know you're gonna do the hymn. We know you're gonna do the prayer. We know you're gonna the praise team gonna sing two songs. Y'all sing no weapon every week. Y'all sing every praise every week. You know, keep the worship fresh. Keep the worship fresh. Shake 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 it up. Do everything different. What I'm what I mean by that is from time to time, you know. Right, do communion at the beginning of so why do you have to do communion at the end? Why do you have why do you have to sing a slow song first and then a fast song? Why you have to sing why you have to sing two 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 fast songs and then you gonna do the slow song on the end? Why do you why do you have a program that says this is the way that it's gonna be every single week? Shake it up. Um and that's what he talks about when you when you fall into that rut, do things different. Ask them to greet their neighbor. Um get to greet their neighbor and say something. You know, shake shake it up. Stop stop doing the, the same the same thing the same thing the same thing all the time. And that's all I have for this chapter. Please unmute your microphones. I would like to discuss um I would like to discuss uh what we what we talked about and I wanna hear your thoughts on even the Brian Karn um the way of the in that video that I showed you. What are your thoughts um concerning that? Anybody can go first. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.